It was December of 1998. I had been married to my awesome wife for just over six years, and as with most young couples, gaming was our entertainment. I had purchased a PlayStation 1 and Metal Gear Solid sessions every night after dinner was the norm. My wife was there to watch and see if I could make it through a mission without being seen. It was truly riveting content, better than any TV show. A couple years later, it was the hack and slashing game Dynasty Warriors 2 that had me hooked. It was just something about cutting through hordes of enemies, I don't know. And then it all ended. Hey, my children are being born. I was a dad. Life got real. So gaming took a back seat. So fast forward seven years. My eight-year-old son was watching me while I was playing Dynasty Warriors 5. Son, this is serious business. I have to kill these forces so that Lu Bei doesn't take over the castle, I would explain. Dad, you need to try this new game my friends are playing. It's called Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. It's a first-person shooter. A first-person what? I would ask. All I could remember from first-person perspectives was that old Mech Warrior game. I, I hated them. No thanks, bud. I'm good. Well, as with all stubborn eight-year-olds, my son persisted. And after two weeks of this, I finally said, fine, I'll try it out. Just for you. I figured, you know, I'll go through the motions and then I could be left alone and go back to my hack and slashing game, right? And then I could say I tried it. I can still remember the very first moment I was thrown into a multiplayer map. It was Countdown. Think of a mountain valley full of hangars and barricades and artillery everywhere. And right in the middle of the map is me. Sitting still and rotating this gun in my face, trying to figure out the myriad of controls and how to even shoot this weapon. Dad, you need to move. Hurry, my son would say. Move? I can't even raise my weapon and aim it. When the game was over, there I was, dead last, zero kills. 21 deaths. What a waste I was to this team. It's, it's funny, I, I was worried about how I affected my team after playing a total of three-fourths of a Call of Duty game. What I didn't realize was that I would play this game for the next seven years, religiously, every night before bed. World at War, Modern Warfare 2, my favorite by the way, Black Ops, Modern Warfare 3, Black Ops 2, and Ghost. And in between those games, I also played other first-person shooters. I spent countless hours in Killzone 2 and Resistance 2, where, by the way, I played with a group I soon got to know very well from all parts of the world. All we would do was replay those story missions as a co-op six-man team over and over every night. For a year, it seemed. Shout out to uh, Wyoming Cowboy, if you hear this. Then this little game came along in 2014 that changed my life. Destiny. What appealed to me in Destiny was that I could play all of these worlds and no PvP required. The entire first year of Destiny, I swore off the Crucible as I was tired of PvP from the years of online multiplayer shooters I did before. I didn't even look at it. Zero curiosity, thank you. The reason I wanted to share with you my history of playing PvP is that I was just like you. I was turned off from the toxic Call of Duty lobbies to just feeling downright lost at the end of every game. My ego couldn't take any more blows to it, and there's nothing like getting called out from your online buddies when you struggle to even get a kill from the last game. That scoreboard can lay it all out in simple terms for you and <laughs> everyone else in the lobby. My reason for creating this extensive episode is to give you some ammunition, uh, no pun intended, to help you get over those hurdles. I started in Destiny with a .35 KD, and that was after years of first-person shooter experience playing other online games. So just know, I've been right there. If you talk to any popular streamers or content creators, and I've interviewed some of those, they also started at the bottom as well. So what I would like to do for you today is create a simple guide for you to not only pump you up and get you confident to play PvP, but give you a checklist of things to begin working on. Getting better in PvP is just like improving at anything else in life. You just need a roadmap to make it happen. So feel free to replay this episode whenever you need a refresher and make sure you're on track. 
I used to listen to repeat episodes of past PvP podcasts, but unfortunately, they're no longer around. So I'm trying to pay it forward, you could say. And I have two absolute great friends of mine that will help me out in today's episode. So let's roll. Have you ever wanted to jump into Destiny 2 but don't know where to start? Or maybe you're a current Destiny 2 Guardian, but are hesitant to jump into a dungeon, raid, or play Gambit, Strikes, or Crucible. And for you established Guardians out there, maybe you ask yourself, you know, I want to try something new in the game, but I'm hesitant due to the sharp learning curve or just need a roadmap. This is the Destiny Help Desk Podcast, where myself and good friends of mine dive deep into the various topics of the game Destiny 2 and give you some great advice in whatever aspect of the game you want to improve. I'm your host, Todd DeGator, with a combined 9,000 hours of game time in Destiny and Destiny 2. So yeah, you can say I'm a true fan of the game. And I invite you to also check out my YouTube channel, where there's a playlist of new and returning Guardian help videos available to guide you on your way. You can follow me on Twitter X at Todd the Gator, And if you haven't already, join our Discord community at discord.gg forward slash guardian downcast that's my other podcast where i hear the stories of our destiny guardians and share the latest news about the game so without further ado on with the show it is you sweating it out with the minds of others across the internet trying to shoot each other in the face have a good time yeah and there's uh there's several modes right to crucible i know it's always changing up i'm not in game right now but there's uh there's Rumble where you play each other. There's a lot of team-based 6v6 games like Iron Banner right now and Control and things of that sort. And then we also have 3v3, I guess, where it's more competitive, more uh, small teams. So they kind of offer a little bit of everything, right? And uh, Yeah, I mean, six, sixes are definitely more um, chaos, so they're more party mode. You can't control your environment as much. There's more variables in sixes. But it, it's more of a, I mean, it can definitely be a good platform for practice if you want to use it that way. But but really, the two game modes play very differently. So, yeah, like, I mean, it, it is, you can take whatever approach you want to any form of Crucible. So by all means, whatever I say, like, don't think that that is the only way. It's just some thoughts off the top of my head about the right. subject matter, right? Sure. Yeah, but I mean, like, uh, threes definitely can be more competitive, but threes can also be easier when you start to pick up on the things that you do have control over and um, the fact that there's less variables in a smaller team-based situation. So, yeah, I mean, that's it. there's all sorts of different flavors of it with Destiny, right? That's my friend Fluffy Fingers MD. He's a longtime Destiny player like me and is the co-host of the Potato Thumbs podcast where he's produced over 300 episodes relating to all elements of the Destiny game. He's also organized community PvP scrims, private matches, where he and his community can practice improvement in the Crucible, along with some private matches among friends. You can say he's as passionate about PvP as I am, and we're both students of the game today as well. So before we get into the meat of the conversation, I asked Fluffy first, what are the basics? What are the overall things that the new or the practicing guardian needs to know going into player versus player or the crucible. Here's what he had to say. Number one, have fun. Cause like, why are you playing this game? If you're not having fun, like why, like don't be, don't play this game. If it's not fun, play a different game or do something valuable with your time because life is short. And if you aren't enjoying this, like you are wasting your precious life. So make sure you're having fun. And make sure whatever you're going for in Crucible is fun. Like, if you are trying to be a better player, there's a there's a well-documented path of things that you can work on. And, and they're all ideas, right? They aren't set in stone. Some will work better for others, but it's a, it's a stepping off point. But if you want to go into Crucible and just try and get kills with, like, a, a weapon that you just like, like, there's nothing wrong with that either. But I think regardless of what your approach is to Crucible, like, I think that there's some basics that you can run with that will help you. So if you're having fun, that's important. Um, people will get frustrated when they get killed. People get too caught up in KDs and numbers and stats that literally no one cares about. Why are you looking like, at me, man? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, no one, no one gives a <laughs> about your stats. I know they do. I hate to bring it to you. They do. Uh, you you think about your stats more than anyone else, and right. the most you're going to get out of someone is, oh wow, that's a big number. Uh, but really, like they don't care. That was they they stopped thinking about it after that sentence ended. You're very true. Um, very true. So so with that being said, own up to your mistakes. Like. Don't get mad if you die. Think about why you died. Did I die because I was out in the open? Did I die because my teammates are over on the left and I'm over on the right by myself trying to run at the team? Did I die because my teammates were dead and I didn't wait for them to spawn and I ran at the team? Did I just panic and push because my teammates were dead and were in like an elimination mode and I can't res them? You know, like... they're. A lot of times when you die, it's it's due to mistakes. Like sometimes it's your gunplay, but a lot of times like there's probably a mistake or, or something that you can learn from. So the best thing that you can do with your time, if you want to be playing Crucible, is like own up to your mistakes and figure out what you what you maybe didn't do right, because getting mad about it isn't going to help you. Again, rule number one, you're not having fun. And, and number two, like, there's always going to be something to get be mad about. Like, meta, for instance, is like the biggest Achilles heel for the Destiny Destiny community. Like, our meta is constantly changing. There's always going to be an outlier or two. It will get fixed eventually. History has shown us that. But it won't get fixed until they push that code. So you just got to live with it until that code is pushed. So what are you going to do? Are you going to embrace it? Move on with life? Know that it's there and acknowledge that it's there and keep going, learn to counter it. You know, you can't handle something. You can't handle a a bow like a Lamar. Don't, don't peek a long lane with your hand cannon. You know, you can't handle a shotgun. Don't push in with your auto rifle or you can embrace it and run with that thing that you hate so much because maybe it's fun, you know, yeah, it's important to like be be a realist about your approach to this video game, right? So own up to your mistake and then also like be real about what's going on in the game. I think that those things will definitely help. Now, sometimes you are going to get frustrated. Let's say you are owning up to your mistakes, but you keep making mistakes. You just aren't feeling it. Maybe you don't have enough food in your system. Maybe you're tired. Whatever it might be. I mean, maybe you just had a bad day. But that happens for humans. If you start getting tilted and it's not a tilt that you can get out of, like, walk away. Like, go for a walk. Go for a bike ride. Do some yoga. Drink a cup of coffee. You know, do something. Fresh air is good. Come back to the game. Maybe it's 15 minutes. Maybe you can go for a 10-minute walk and feel better. Maybe it's an hour. Maybe it's like four hours, you know, but you're always going to be better in the end walking away and coming back to it, Uh, whether it's that same day, whether it's a long break or a short break. Like, you know, I mean, get some food, get some fresh air, get some exercise like those things help because really like you want your head in the game. If 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 your goal is to improve, right, you want your head in your game, You, you, you want a positive mindset, you want to be open to open to what's going on so that you can focus on the things that are important. What did you start out as when you first played Destiny? What was your KD? What did you start out as? You oh, remember? yeah, I was horrible. Uh, for a good chunk of my Destiny 1 career, I was like in the point six point seven range. Yeah, I think I was about point. I came from Call of Duty, so I was already used to first-person shooters, but I I think I was a, I think I was right there, point six eight, point seven, something like that. So, yeah, I mean, Destiny... Fluffy, Destiny is one game that is just so different from a lot of shooters out there. You play a lot of shooters out there, and the and you get killed within fractions of a second. Call of Duty being the one I'm, I mentioned. I yeah. know they've I know they've increased it over the years, but Destiny is at least to me is one of the games where people have shields, they have over shields, and then you eliminate that, and then you get down to the actual killing of their their life their life force in the game. But that what that what's great about that is I I still believe this to this day that you have to be a little bit higher skill playing Destiny. Oh, I'm gonna get so much hate for that that comment. You have to have a lot more skill in Destiny because the time to kill is so long that one you can't run and bust behind a team and kill three people at once before they even know what's going on. 
you can't charge people. You can't, you, I, I've tried. Trust me. I'm a flanker. I love to flank. It's a, it's a bad habit of mine from Call of Duty because in Call of Duty, if you ran behind a team that didn't see you and there was no UAV up, you could eliminate four or five people. They'd even not even know where you came from. But in Destiny, you got radar popped up everywhere. They know you're coming and you may possibly kill one person. Very, very rare that you would even kill two unless you had a super or something that does mass damage. But as far as gunplay, it just seems like it's the only game out there where you really have to think three steps ahead before you do anything in the game, it seems. It's funny because um, I agree with you that the time to kill feels long, but like the reality is the time to kill like on on competitive weapons is 0.67, 0.77, you know, like those are the, still those like, are like less the, than a, yeah, those are the less best weapons second. in the game. Yeah. Right. Right. But it's crazy because like any weapon whose time to kill is over a second in crucible is considered extremely slow. Like you are, you're running uphill, my friend with the weapon that's killing that slow. But, it, but, but I agree with you that that's the funny part is we're literally talking about fractions of a second total to kill someone but there is that moment like you have a moment to react like i i play i play a subclass right now that gives me reaction moments like that to escape Mm -hmm. and if you're fast enough if you have that reflex built in you can you can be very slippery uh, when you're caught off guard exactly i mean that's if if this was call of duty someone came behind you and got the best of it you were dead you have no way to react to it you rarely have any radar to even know what's going on. But secondly, it, the, a good player, if they start getting shot at from someone who's flanking them, if they have good gun skill and they have good map awareness of what's going on around them, they can flip around and turn the tables on you and actually take that person out. That's very hard to do in a Call of Duty or a game that's much faster time to kill. And for that reason, I think it, you can be a more skillful player in Destiny and have higher KD or whatever, whatever you measure your your metrics on and playing the game because you can react because I don't know at least all the years that I played call of duty when I got shot in the back, by the time I even knew what was going on, it was fractions of a second. There was no way I could react in time. Even when I was a younger gentleman and I had better reaction time, but in destiny, I love the fact that a good player can, like you said, get slippery, get out of the bad situation and turn it into a good situation. And that, that takes skill, my friend. It does. Yep. Now, in this episode, you're going to hear from three different perspectives. You've already met my friend Fluffy Fingers MD, and you will hear my opinions later on in the show. But I'd like to introduce you to another of my community friends. He's one of the newer podcasters from the Owl Sector Alliance and co hosts a Destiny podcast called the Blueberry Lounge, which has more of a slant on the PvP side of things in the game. Meet my friend. Sweaty spooks. You know, it's just kind of a testament as an extension of the love for Crucible in this game. I mean, it, it comes from the silliness, the wackiness, the artwork, the aesthetics, the environments, uh, as well as the feel of the game. Because if you go play a different game for a while, there does come a point where you miss just the general feel of the game. Now, of course, with all things that we love, whether it's a family, uh, whether it's shopping, doesn't matter what it is. At some point, you're gonna hit a you're gonna hit a wall at some point, and you know sometimes you just have to take a step back and look at the bigger picture and say, what is this that uh, that I'm really t- trying to get a look at here? So, what is it about the Crucible that I love? Well, Gator, it, for me, it's it's a couple things. I mean, first and foremost, I typically identify as a solo player. Uh, so for PvE folks, they generally have a handful, if maybe maybe even a group of folks that they can generally play with. And not saying that I don't have access to that, but uh, you know, I find it a little more difficult to coordinate groups uh, in order to come together with that common goal in mind. So a lot of the time after work, maybe I just don't have the headspace for people that day. Maybe I just want to play by myself. So, you know, rather than going to do a raid, you know, which does require some level of teamwork, I can just go into the crucible by myself, kind of just clear the mentals, go in with, uh, you know, no expectations. Maybe that day I'm only going to focus on one thing. Maybe I'm just going to focus on staying connected to my teammate's hip. Maybe I'm just going to focus on 
going from cover to cover, from point A to point B. Playing with intention is what this is called. So why would new Guardians want to play this? Well, it, I would like to think that there's a lot of folks out there who identify as a solo player as well. Perhaps it came from having a negative LFG experience. Perhaps they just uh, simply, like like me, don't just don't want to people that day. And they just kind of want to have an activity to do to wind down, turn the mentals off, but still enjoy their time. Now, Crucible is kind of a different beast than a lot of what the game has to offer. This this game is so massive, dude. It has so much to offer from PvE content, the Vanguard playlist, uh, Grandmaster Nightfalls to Gambit. Yeah, I know, Gambit, but <laughs> you know... Gambit is a, a pretty good common ground between what everybody loves to do in the game. And you can still do private matches and come together. And you know what, Gator? I actually have a lot of fun going in with a stack team of all of our friends going and duking it out together in Gambit. So, you know, I like to think that although we meme on Gambit, it is still has some sort of a purpose. And uh, I certainly enjoyed Gambit Prime whenever that was yeah. here. But, yeah. you know, enough about Gambit. We're here to talk about Crucible today. <laughs> Why... Dude, why should New Guardians want to play it? Oftentimes, you know, I tend to have this personal belief, and this is just personal opinion here, that there's a bit of a stigma that's followed by the word crucible or PvP environments. You know, it's just the same as any other online community, online environment. Of course, you're going to come across that negativity. And for some folks, certainly if they're solo playing and they don't have the experience or the input of an external source, Maybe they only, you know, it's a vacuum of what you're being exposed to, right? So maybe that is their only experience, that negative experience, and they're a little shy to go back in there. Because in this game, everybody loves to be a team player. So when you feel like you're letting down the team, you know, maybe you're shooting yourself in the foot because you don't want to experience that again. But, you know, just hang in there, Guardian, because we're going to get into the good stuff. For me, it's about self-reward, earned by myself and knowing that I had earned it for myself. It does take some time because I had to learn a little bit more about the mechanics of the game in order for me to understand where I stood amongst the rest of the team. And it does take, you know, a little bit of honesty with yourself, which I admit can be painful sometimes, but is absolutely necessary under the umbrella of an improvement focused mindset. So, you know, why should new guardians want to play it? Well, first off, it's all about having fun. And that should always be goal number one. If you're not having fun, take a break. Take a breather. There are other games, believe it or not, that are well-deserving of your attention. But at the end of the day, I'm always coming back to Destiny 2 Crucible because that's my bread and butter. That's what I love to do the most. And I get the most joy whenever I notice my own personal growth. So that would be my answer as to maybe why Guardians might want to play it. But, you know, that's going to be subjective per person because we all have unique experiences to offer. I mean, here's the thing. Like, um, PvE is fun, um, especially the first time you play it, right? Uh, you don't, you don't know enemy spawns. You might know the enemy, so you might have some knowledge built on it and how to defeat said enemy, but you don't know your environment. You don't know how they have things coded. You don't know the difficulty of it. It's exciting, right? For someone like me, that excitement only goes so far. I can only be so much, so engaged with that predictability of that scale. Now, I definitely enjoy dungeons i definitely enjoy raids I, I enjoy gms like i think that that content pulls towards me more but when i sat back and thought about this question really it's the people and not the activity that draw me into destiny with pve so i do love raids but it's because i'm with six of my friends or or you know five friends i guess right i, I mean i could be my own friend but uh, that's neither here nor there. Well, we're so all our own friends, Buffy. <laughs> we gotta love ourselves. So, first, right? yeah. yeah. So, like, that's why you don't. I don't get a kick out of trying to solo a dungeon. I understand why people enjoy it. It just isn't my thing. It's a different type of difficulty, right? Because you're you're memorizing spawns. You're memorizing what enemies do. You're memorizing how to be most lethal through a maze that they've built, but. I, I guess I don't I don't get as much enjoyment from that predetermined maze. And the thing about Crucible is 
while the maps might be the same for the last 20 years, the, the variable is the people that you're playing. And a good majority of people play similar. And that's fun because you can try and predict things. You can try and set yourself up for things. But a lot of people don't know what they're doing. A lot of people make weird decisions. And so it's that it's that constant element of not for sure knowing what the other person is going to do and trying to react and adapt, trying to adapt to their play style, to their weapons, to their subclass, to how aggressive they are, to how they move around a map. Like there's there's all these things that come with Crucible that are not predetermined code that a dev put in. And that predetermined code, again, can be fun, but to me, I, I, I get lost in the repetition of it, right? So I, I appreciate the the randomness of PvP. The only thing I would probably add to it is that Crucible, every time that you play it, offers a different experience. Unlike uh, a Strike, as an example, where you know what to expect. You know where those enemies are going to spawn. You know what strategies those PvE uh, enemies are going to be presenting to you. And you catch on to it, and you can figure it out. However, for Crucible... Uh, it's a little bit more of a learning curve because it's so different every time you step your foot in there. Yeah, good point. Yeah, I mean, you can't. I mean, you can memorize anything the computer throws at you or the server throws at you, but you'll never be able to to memorize what a human being on the other side of that joystick is going to be able to do. When I started, when I came out of out of uh, Call of Duty, and I was deciding to jump into this Destiny game, and realizing everyone had freaking shields on and stuff, I was like, "What the hell's this?" Um, but the thing was, is, um, it was a challenge to me. I, I had always really never pursued getting better at Call of Duty because the time to kill was so quick. Someone mm-hmm. can hide in a corner and shoot you in the back and there's nothing you can do to prepare yourself for that. But if someone did that to you in Destiny, you got this bright red radar that shows them hiding there. And you have, because you have shields, you have a chance to actually get out of that and use some of your skills to, fight back and right. that's the reason why i love to play this game and man let me tell you when you punch through that average line that everyone seems to hover around once you break through that average line the game is a totally different it's a totally different game once you mm-hmm. bust through and you get into that the next level of skill in the crucible it just means so much more and i think it's more fun because i know i've punched through that level not being braggadocious here i'm just saying i've put a lot of time in i earned it i learned how to play this game and granted i'm probably rusty now because i haven't played in a while but once you punch through that beautiful 1.0 kd and you're right you're you're starting to get uh, on the other side of that 1.0 you start to realize that there's a lot to this game that still needs to be learned and you can't wait to learn it okay the stage is set You now know where all three of us stand when it comes to PvP, and also how we approach the game mentally. We've explained what makes the Crucible so fun and challenging to play, and why new and existing players can accomplish personal goals and getting better in a game. Now let's get into the particulars, starting with one half of the equation, gun skill. The one thing I think I kind of separate this when it comes to playing Crucible is there's gun skill, and then there's other skill, like map awareness, knowing how to read a radar correctly, uh, the, a lot of the different mechanics of the game. What do you suggest for people to improve their gun skill? What do you suggest? I mean, how do you improve your gun skill? What is your uh, regimen in getting better gun skill? I um, I have aimbots downloaded. I don't ever use them. <laughs> um, I know some of my high-end player friends yeah. um, do that. And it helps them warm up, and they are, they're very, very talented people. Oh, you're talking about um, aim trainers? Yeah, like oh, aim trainers. Aimbot. Sorry, I, I thought sorry, I was not aimbot. something else. No, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I thought you were joking. No, like, like aim trainers. Sorry. Gotcha, gotcha. I, have, I have a couple of aim trainers downloaded, okay. um, on Steam, and I, I don't, I don't ever use them. Um, it, it was a friend that suggested them. They're free. Mm-hmm. Um, so, then my approach is to just be mindful while I'm playing. So like I, I play a lot. I, I play a lot of PVP. Um, I prefer to play with friends, but I will solo queue because I enjoy it. And so when I'm solo queuing, I really try and focus on practice time. 
I am a different person in comp. I do not care about my rank. If I get into like a, a promotion series, like sure, I'd rather win it than lose it. But I do not care. Like I do not care about my rank. So I don't go in focused on wins or losses. I don't go in focused on my KD. I go in to focus on playing better. So that means that like if for aim, for example, like I'm thinking like if I have a hand cannon out, I'm thinking like, am I using my cover for my hand cannon? Because a hand cannon is a, is a gun that you want to use cover and peek and shoot with and interrupt their sight lines and interrupt their flow of shots. And so I try and think about that when I'm when I'm playing to make sure that I am taking the time to aim and line up my shot and and click the mouse as I'm moving or peeking or whatever it is I'm doing. If I'm trying a new build, all seasons that I play, I try and branch out at the beginning of the season, whether it's a different character, a different loadout, uh, whatever it might be. And so I, there's a learning curve to whatever that play style is. And so this season, it seems like Strand Hunter with a wave frame grenade launcher and a very fast swapping hand cannon, most likely like the Rose, I had to relearn my aim because I have to shoot at the ground so the waveframe hits them, swap weapons, pull my reticle up higher to them, and follow up with a headshot or a body shot. And so uh, I just went in and just started playing, knowing that I would be bad, knowing that I would lose gunfights that I would win if I had a different weapon in my hands. But also knowing that the outcome is just like sniping or anything else, when it clicks, all of a sudden you're really lethal. Gun awareness, gun skill, um, it can relate to more of a mechanical skill versus a mental awareness aspect. So there are definitely a few aim trainers out there. Uh, one that, that I use as an example is Kovacs. Uh, that's one that I use. I know that some folks like to use aim labs, which uh, to my uh, knowledge is a free to use software. Now, it comes a little bit more difficult once we start talking console, but when I used to do back in the day, I mean, all of us have those older style Call of Duty games. I used to just go in and turn on bots, and that would be my aim trainer, uh, just dealing with bots. Now, when the original Modern Warfare 3 title had come out, that's how I had taught myself to quickscope. I would turn on some bots. I would turn my sensitivity up to the highest. I would make sure that my gun, uh, or a sniper in this case, was kitted correctly to have the highest amount of handling and movement possible so I could aim down the sight, aim up to a head, and just click it. So there are a few different ways to do this. Now, say you don't have access to uh, Call of Duty. In the game, you can go to Savathun's Throne World, where you craft weapons. Now, behind the crafting table is a well, it's a gun range, essentially, where you can practice target shooting, you can test your weapons and things to that effect. Uh, it'll make sure that you get enough ammunition for all of your weapons. So that way, if you want to try a one, two hand cannon shot, swap over to the shotgun, click bang, and, you know, just maybe time out exactly what mods account for what, uh, how quickly you perform. Uh, and that's another thing, too, is... <sighs> For there, there's a bit of a difference when it comes to PVE main people and those who are considered PVP main people. Now, a PVP main will recognize immediately when there's a PVE main in there because you can see that their mods are reflective of functionality within a raid. Now, when you're in PVP, you're more interested in specific gun perks, which will allow you to perform in such a way that is, you know, specific to you in the crucible. But essentially what I'm saying is between stats and, um, I guess your preferred perks associated to your preferred guns is what is really going to allow you to perform. As an example, let's talk shotguns just for a moment. If you have quick draw and snapshot, you know that that shotgun is going to be very quick. You can pull it out quickly. You can aim down the scope ADS very quickly, but it doesn't have opening shot which means you're not going to get the extended range. Maybe it doesn't reach all of the way, and you have to get yourself a little bit closer to danger in order to complete that shotgun shot. So, yes, you are very much correct in the sense that it's going to take a few L's. It's going to take some losses for you to learn those lessons that, okay, 
although this weapon is very fast, I still wasn't close enough to my target in order to secure that W. So maybe I should try swapping out snapshot sights for opening shot and quick draw. So that way, I still have the ability to pull out my shotgun very quickly. And then opening shot can do the remainder of the work that I needed in order to be at a safe distance and still have that time to react with a melee hit should I whiff my gunshot. So, like, yeah, I think you hit the nail right on the head with that, Gator. I, I'm glad you mentioned the the range behind uh, the the crafting area at Savathun Stone World because I forgot to mention that in previous videos I've done on the Crucible. That's a great place to practice. Plus, it gives you damage numbers too. Yes, it does. So, and yeah, certain. I guess there's so for the the beginner it, out there, there's yeah. there's floating plates, mm -hmm. and when you hit those floating plates, they're going to give you specific damage numbers. As an example, one plate will only give you critical damage numbers, whereas one will only give you body hit damage numbers. So you could better differentiate from there. Now, as an example, where you might want to know the difference. In this week that we're speaking, Gator, uh, one of the weapons that was highly acclaimed to come back in PVE. Well, it's Warden's Law. And one of the uh, damage perks in the fourth column of that weapon is Kill Clip. Now, without Kill Clip proc, I had to do a test here. Without Kill Clip proc, you're going to do two bullets of 47 crit damage. Now, as soon as you enable Kill Clip, then you're going to have 57. And the difference here, if you're going to be hitting 47 damage per shot, you're going to have to pull that trigger three times for what is called an optimal TTK, which stands for time to kill. With kill clip proc, you will only need to pull that trigger twice, which is going to shorten that time to kill and uh, give you an advantage over the, the leading competition. Yeah, very good point. A two tap and a three tap, it's, it's, it's night and day difference. It really is. Mm -hmm. And those are those moments where you're like, hey, you only shot me twice. How do you kill me? That's where you mm -hmm. got to realize there's just a lot of mo there's a lot of stuff going on in this game, a lot of coding, and what's going on in this game. I don't know how Bungie keeps up with it, to be honest. But and I uh, didn't learn any of it until I came yeah. to Destiny. Yeah. I really didn't, yeah. uh, mostly because I get my biggest dopamine hit out of hand cannon usage. Mm -hmm. But every single shot counts. So whereas in Call of Duty, I was very much rewarded for just going into hardcore just spraying and praying and be the first person to hit first. As mm -hmm. long as you hit first, you win. But I didn't think very much about positioning. I just thought, as long as I can hit this yeah. person first, I'll win that fight. And, I mean, don't get me wrong. There is a certain rewarding game loop behind that. It's a very successful franchise. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. But over in Destiny, I had to play with more intention, which raised my awareness levels to the mechanics. Things like accuracy cone angles. Now, this is a big, big term which often can, uh, you know, a lot of folks may shy away from, but essentially when you're ADSing and you're looking at your reticle, you pull the trigger. You're going to notice the outside circle of that reticle is going to bloom a little bit, which means your bullets, uh, well, they could stray anywheres within that bloom or the reticle friction. Now, let's say you put something like moving target on said Warden's Law, you have uh, kill clip proct. It's going to keep that circle tighter, which means your accuracy cone angle well you're not going to have bullets flying off they're going to be a little bit more tighter and able to better predict where that bullet is going to land yeah and not to mention you're going to have more power behind each bullet because of kill clip yeah that's exactly. a double whammy you can see how the, you can really have a lot of synergy in this game if you really build around it and that's another thing too i wanted to mention is the uh, build you make for pve like raids and dungeons and whatever else you're doing in the game strikes mm -hmm. totally different your builds you're looking are for totally, functionality exactly yeah. you want to build your 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 you want it when you have builds and you're saving them in dim and hopefully everyone's using destiny item manager by now when you're saving them in uh your destiny item manager vault you should have one for crucible and one for pve for regular stuff you're doing around the world because it is such a difference i've gone into pvp matches with my raid gear on Mm -hmm. Big difference. My guns are sluggish. Uh, I'm not hitting my target as quickly because I don't have uh, any kind of aim enhancements on any of my weapons. There's a, there's a lot. I mean, that's that's a totally different subject. And maybe we can maybe we can come back and talk to that at a later time. But yeah, it, it, there's there's so much in Crucible that people don't know. All people hear is how people are having fun doing it. And, and you know what, Elskater? Yeah. And this is important for the listener too. All this being said. 
from even for myself, 4,000 hours into the game, I'm still learning to this day. Exactly. You're always learning and it's always a challenge. And you may think oh, I'm getting bored because I'm killing everybody too quick. I've says some, something I've never said. I've never gotten bored because I'm just running over everyone. There's always someone better. There's always mm-hmm. someone who thinks or outsmarts you in the game. And that's what makes it fun. That's what keeps mm-hmm. me coming back. The when variance I, and experiences. Yes. We have that game where it comes down to one point, the way you panicked and you didn't handle yourself the way you should have, but the other player kept us cool and turned around and clutched and won it. You never, I swear I go to bed thinking about those matches, man. I'll be thinking and in my I mean, head, what yep. could I have done better there? Just like you said earlier. Mm-hmm. Are you still with me? Have we lost you? I realize this is a lot of information coming your way, but when in real time will you be able to be a fly on the wall listening to three different perspectives in PvP players and a handpick little chunks of knowledge to use in your experience? This is why I stated in the intro that I recommend coming back and re-listening to this episode as you can learn something we talk about and then immediately go and try it out in a live game. So now, let's get into some more tips that you can use. I was going through my um, my office. I found this card, and I remember watching a YouTuber talk about getting better in the Crucible. And these were the the one, two, three, four, five things that I got out of this. Um, the first one was practice versus playing. There is two different modes when you play Crucible, right? There's there's times when, like you said, when you're trying and experimenting with stuff, you're trying to improve your gun skill. You have a goal in mind when you go in to play the game. I'm just practicing today. I've got this new pulse rifle. I want to see where it kicks, where it fires. I want to see how effective it is at certain ranges. So I'm practicing versus yeah, playing. You're, fo- you're, you're focusing on the important part of learning the pulse rifle and not your stats or right. dying, right. like you, you know, hey, I'm going to die. Yeah. I'm going to die more often than normal because I got something new, but it's your practice time. You're yep. acknowledging it. And you don't even care about the scoreboard. In fact, you probably already nope. load into another game well before it even appears. And I never see it. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm always loading into a new game. I never see the score. I don't either when I'm practicing. And versus play, though. Now, play is, say, you got a, two other friends and you're Jumping into a comp match, you all know what your jobs are. You guys are organized. You've talked it through. You know what each of you are going to do. You know the strategy you're going to work. You know how you're going to move around the map for the week. Say it's trials. You want to know how you guys are going to move, what your strategy is going to be. You guys have played together. You know how you're adapting. That's where you put your practice into, into play, right? That's when you've, that's what you do the practice for is when you get into a game where it's more serious or where you're trying to have some success and you're trying to apply what you've learned, right? Yeah. The second thing I had on here was practice with better players. Boy, I learned that yesterday in comp. Nessie had my ass every time I turned around. Nessie was there. and uh, uh, He's he's remarkably good. Dude, that guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, he was probably not using – he was probably using the easy weapons oh, on you guys. Oh, he was. I'm sure he was – it was a – it was – it was practice for him, probably. It was definitely a play. For me, I was trying yeah. to just get back into the groove again. But – uh it seems like when you play with better players, whether you're on the same team as the players and you're watching, you're trying to keep up with them and adapt to what they're doing. But it also on the other end, right? On when you're going against players and say, th- I'm going to just say threes just to keep the conversation simple here. Yeah. Because that's, yeah. I think threes is where you really learn the most in Crucible, in my opinion. But, um, what do you, what do you, what is your opinion on that as far as practicing with better or playing against or with better players? I, I mean, I, I feel very lucky. I um, have this ingrained in my head, so it automatically pops in anytime I go up against really, really tough players is I know I'm going to die. The goal is to try and get a kill, to try and not make it easy for them. Like, I, I picked that up in D1 from some streamer or Crucible Radio or something. I don't remember what, but it's really cool. I try. I just, I don't get shook by good players. I just try. I don't let them get in my head is maybe the better way to say it. I just know they're better than me. What can I do to make it hard to kill me, 
to try and get a kill on them. Like, I really have to just focus up and try um, because I know what the result's going to be if I don't try. And I know what the result most likely will be if I do try, but at least, like, it's practice time. You know, let's try. Let's try some. And uh, I'm curious, when you're stomping people that are well below your uh, skill level, do you learn much? Uh, I learned that it's fun to stomp people that are well below my <laughs> <Okay>. skill level. <laughs> All right, fun. Do you, you learn anything that's going to help improve your game? All right, I'll wait for you. No, that. I mean, obviously, you always want to play. <laughs> yeah, it's it's in any. It, it applies to everything. It does, yeah. Uh, you always want to learn from someone who knows more than you. Uh, you always want to play with better players. Uh, you always want to paint with a better painter. You always want to race with a better race car driver. You want to do that stuff. And if if you can, like, talk to them and, and figure out if they have any tips. Like, we we stream our games a lot in Discord. And, well, you mentioned um, that real quick. You guys do scrims as well, right? You do, uh... Are no, you, like, no, no but I mean, just, just, like, when we're hanging out in chat. Okay. Like, it's very common for a couple people to be streaming their, their gameplay. And, um you can get some really good feedback. And the thing is like the cool thing about discord is it's just you and your friends. So like, you don't have to have the pressures of Twitch. If you don't want, you can just hit stream game. And if people want to jump in and watch, they might jump in and watch. And if not, what harm was it? I was doing that today with uh, Rafi and one of their raids they were doing in the goop troop. So it's fun to watch. It's fun to watch, uh, you know, people trying to teach other people, certain things as well. And of course, watch yep. your play. That's a great idea too. I didn't even think that discord people are streaming all the time. They're just streaming. They're just sharing their screen of what they're doing. Yep. Uh, yeah. You know what I find usually when I play better players is my level of my gameplay goes up. I'm on yeah, my I'm, I'm at full attention. I'm really focusing on what I've learned so far. I'm, I'm, I'm really, really trying to keep up with my team, whether they're better than me or whether I'm trying to at least shine against those better players. What you said, perfect. You you want to make yeah, I mean, yourself hard to kill. If you get into a trials match and you're stomping the other team, it's so common to lose like your fifth game because you've gone four games in a row, absolutely annihilating, annihilating them. And by that point, you're just flying around the map, being careless, not using cover. And all of a sudden it's 4-1. You're know, like, oh, crap. Like this game could have been over, but I got careless because the skill level is so different. Which that doesn't happen, right? If you're playing good players, you're already focused. You're so already, you're already, you don't make 100%. those mistakes. Yep. Another thing I had on my card here was sharpen your decision making. I'm pausing if dramatically to see what you'll say about that. I, I mean, you can only focus on so many things, right? Right. So stick with your team and then focus on whatever you're trying to improve at that time. It can be like one or it doesn't have to only be one thing, but you know, maybe it's one or two things. Maybe it's slowing down your, your shots to make sure that you're actually landing them and using cover. Right. You know, and then, and then like, you know, just try and be mindful about what you're doing with your time. Like if, if you don't have a shot on the enemy, like hold on cover for a second, look up, see where your team is and then make a decision. Like, what am I doing now? Am I moving to reposition with my team? Am I moving to engage? Like, yeah, yeah, for sure. Another, another thing that I remember going back to my call of duty days when I was a, a, a stray little, little Bambi trying to play crucible for the first time. Well, it was PVP back then or multiplayer, whatever you want to call it. I remember I was so confused. I just froze in the middle of the battlefield. And I guess when I read sharpen your decision making, I think just try something. Don't just stand there. Try yeah. something. Make a decision. I'm going to head this way on the map. I'm going to I'm going to run the outside of the map. I'm going to see if that helps. I want to uh, you know I'm going to just start running and I want to start seeing where the outside boundaries of this map are. Let's start learning this map. Or if I'm in a uh, I'm in a gunfight with somebody, if I see that I'm not going to win that battle, I got to act i've got to decide right then and there and that's where he says sharpen your decision making get into cover and regroup live another day yeah. be hard to kill yeah. make a new plan yeah start following that is your plan to re again is your plan to regroup with your team is your plan to go on with the gunfight like yeah yep. 
Mastering Game Mechanics. Man, there are so many mechanics playing Crucible, man. There are so many systems at play. So I, would e- I wouldn't even want to see the programming involved when people play one PvP game. As far as this proccing and this happening and this being 30% for five seconds and man almighty. Um, what for, for the people who their head spinning when they see all these stats and stuff going on in the Crucible, what do you suggest as far as at least starting to learn the game mechanics in Crucible? I mean, you need to you need to understand the mechanics of your character um, the most. So, um, again, I think it goes back to research. Um, are you watching someone who, you know, are you watching someone who plays the same type of character that you play? Are you watching someone that uses the same type of guns that you want to use? How do they approach using those guns? Um, if the character is playing the same character that you have, like for me, for instance, if I watch someone who's really good at Strand Hunter, um, how do they use their grapple? When do they use their grapple? Um, you know, you brought up Nessie earlier. Mm-hmm. I I watched him play Ark Warlock last season, mm-hmm. and that is why I played Ark Warlock for the rest of the season. By watching a good player use a build and watching how they use the build. And I modeled my entire season off of one night of watching gameplay. Wow. And it, yeah. So like, I think you need to understand the mechanics of your character and how that character is effective. And from there, that's where you grow. That's where you, you know, you, you bring in the guns, you bring in the armor and the mods, you bring in your gameplay, your map awareness, all that, all those other pieces fall into place. But you really do have to figure out the identity of your your mechanic as a guardian first. Hey, thanks again for listening to the Destiny Help Desk Podcast. You can check out all of my contact information at destinyhelpdeskpodcast.com or visit my Twitter X at Todd the Gator. Remember, that's two Ds and G-A-T-R. And finally, my YouTube channel at Todd the Gator. You can email me at ToddTheGator at gmail.com for any questions or comments. And if you have a question for the show, you can also send me a voice message at speakpipe.com forward slash Destiny Help Desk, where your message may be played live on a future show. I welcome your questions, as that's my way of helping you. And who knows, maybe there's another guardian out there with the same question, so you may be helping others without even knowing it. Please rate and review the show on Apple Music or Spotify or whatever podcast app you use. And that review may help make this show visible to other Guardians out there as well. So thank you, and later, Guardian. Now... Even more Crucible and PvP tips that you can use right now. Take it away, sweaty spooks. And to speak more to the solo versus team-based environments, um, you know, you're very much correct that when you're playing solo, everything that is considered a choice is all on your shoulders. And you do have to take that ownership and that responsibility in order to reflect to say, what could I have done differently in that situation to improve for the future? But, you know, Gator, I have to admit, by playing solo for so long, I actually found it quite difficult at the start of playing in a team, understanding things like communication, calling out the next point of interest or perhaps an objective is coming up. Perhaps I noticed that uh, my teammate A is coming up against enemy A that has a super that they didn't see before. It opens up different variables that maybe you didn't see yourself. So, you know, don't get me wrong, there is definitely benefits to both worlds that really kind of complement each other once you find the proper balance. And that's the key word here is balance. What else can we can we talk about here? What else, What's another, what we would call a pillar that someone needs to make sure they know about going into Crucible? What works for you? Now, when I say this, as an example, one of the individuals that got me into Destiny, he's a very large bow player. And just recently, actually, after six years, Gator, we finally got together. We did our 1v1. He knew that I've been 
off on my own trying to improve in Crucible with intention. And uh, at the time that we had met, he was a Gambit main. Of course, he was much better at Crucible at that time than I because he had more experience. But I was finally able to say that I had finally defeated him. And he shook my hand literally and said, you did it. You did exactly what you set out to do. Uh, you played with intention. You learned your lessons. But being a bow main for him, he likes to use this little weapon called the Monarch. And me being a, a, a hand cannon shotgun main, I had to be very, I had to finesse <laughs> him very skillfully uh, in order to be able to stay in that fight and uh, to continue the fight with him in order to take home that W. So again, play with attention, sure. But in this case, what it came down to was a weapons awareness. What disadvantages were working against me? And I just had to be very mindful of that and not give too much away for him. Now, of course, I would sometimes give a little bit away, but this is with a, a strategy that I like to call baiting. Uh, so that way I can pull you to a position that is advantageous for me. And basically what I'm doing with this is I'm making you fight my way. I'm not fighting the way that you want to fight. Because I know that fighting your way is going to be a disadvantage for me. So, you know, it just it comes down to and this, of course, is going to come with time, some experience and some lessons. And in my case, um, I would spend time on each individual class to really learn what it is that the weak points are. Uh, so much so that I would go as far as to play the a whole Europa story again on Titan just so I could have access to stasis and create what we like to call, I like to call the Murky Mark imposter build. <laughs> but I had to do that in order to learn his play style so I knew how to counter it in the Crucible moving forward because it was really a style that I struggled to play against. So let's say your new Guardian starts to understand some of the basics. They understand cover, things like that. What things should they begin to work on to hone their game? I'm going to just say game sense in general. What is available to them in terms of tools? What is going against them in terms of sandbox? And, you know, just being very mindful of how you can be hurt in the crucible uh, and how you can be a counterpart to those things and those actions. Because crucible really what it comes down to it is a constant flow of interchanging variables that are best countered by principles and not by the 20 steps, if that makes sense. If it, it, I'm trying to dumb it down a little bit to an analogy, but that's really the best way that I could put it, if that makes sense. That's very good. No, that's very good. I like that. It's much easier to remember the three principles over the 25 steps. Yeah. Tell me about it. Yeah. I feel like because we play solo, we learned a lot of this stuff a lot faster than probably people who I'm not saying crutch on teams, but maybe put some of the pressure on other teammates where they don't have as much pressure on themselves. Where you're playing solo, man, you're it's all on you. And what you decide to do is is it goes. What is map awareness in your in your words? What would you call map awareness? Map awareness is understanding the map lanes, understanding the map coverage points, uh, where you have advantages and disadvantages. Where are you going to be more in the open with no escape? Where are you going to have the advantage, uh, whether it's a sightline advantage, above ground, ability to move around them, to control where they move, things like that, right? right. And that's not going to be obvious right away. That comes with lots and lots of hours of, of playing. Doing your reps. Um, I think you can learn map awareness by playing, but I really think that you learn map tricks by watching skilled players. You can only learn so much about the map playing it. You are going to take similar routes every time. You might be smarter about peeking a corner or using cover, but there are people out there that that will blow your mind with the tricks that they know about maps. I, I can't tell you the number of times I've been in a map with a high-skilled friend that I've played for eight years, and they jump up into a corner that I've never seen anyone jump into where they are totally covered and have a perfect shot on a lane that people use all the time. This isn't a glitch. This is part of the map. It is literally just the geometry, but they know that at this angle with this geometry, yep. they have advantage and you're not going to see them. Destiny is not a game where you can sit in a corner and wait for someone from that spot. But Destiny is a game where you might be in a position to take advantage of that spot at some time. 
And that's the right way to play that. It's not, I know this trick. I'm going to sit and wait for something to fall in my lap. It's, I know this trick. Hopefully I remember it the next time I'm in this room and get into a gunfight. But you learn that from watching good players and emphasis on the plural there. Watch a couple people. It's better if you watch people that play a subclass that you play. If you play Titan, try and find Titan streamers. Watch good Titan streamers. Watch how they move. Watch how they use the Titan. Watch how they move around the map. Not just they're going through, you know, library in the back of burnout, but how are they rotating through it? What cover are they sliding to? Where are they jumping? Where are they not jumping? There's a lot of things that that good players do. And once you start paying attention, you'll see um, them moving to cover, them using weird sight lines, stuff like that. And so that's, I think, the best way to get map awareness is is to play, but then also to watch people when, when you can't be playing and just really study how they're moving and using that map. Good points, dude. I mean, that's how I, that was my university was Twitch. I watched True Vanguard. I watched uh, Frostbolt. I, I've, I've, I've watched so many players out there and they all have different play styles too. And you'll soon realize what kind of play style you use when you're in the game. It doesn't mean you're stuck with that play style. But you learn, man, that's just such great, that's just great knowledge right there for someone just starting. Get on Twitch, spend an hour a day or hour a week even, just watch an hour of gameplay on someone streaming that plays the same class or the same type of uh, guardian that you do. And just watch how they react in certain maps, how they, how they get out of trouble, how they uh, do a lot of different things. Radar is just is a totally different game when you have radar because the it's thing your I, third eye. But the thing about it is, sweaty, Bungie is encouraging a fight. Take that radar away, and what's everyone do? They become passive, and it just slows the game down to a halt. When you know there's someone around the corner there, and you think you can jump through the door and flip around and shoot him with a shotgun, you're more inclined to try to do that because you know because of the information in your head that you're going to try to do that. And Bungie, that's what I love about the Crucible. It is encouraging a fight. It encourages right. people are magnetic when they're in these maps, the days of passive sitting in corners and watching, watching long, uh, um, alleyways and, and sight lines. Those days are much, those they're just much harder to play that way. You can play that way, but just know that people know where you are and, uh, right. you got to keep that in mind. So, we talked about map movement. We talked about positioning. Game sense is very important. That's the one good thing about Bungie right now. They may not have a lot of new maps coming out, but that's good for new players. That's for good for new Crucible players because guess what? That means you have less maps to have to memorize and, and figure out how to work. Every map right. has that blueprint. Every map has those lanes that work and those lanes that do not work. And after you play them enough times, you realize where the teams tend to go. The players tend to go. You tend to, you, you understand how the games keep ending up when you play on that map. So there right. comes that game sense, right? You, because you've played and you put, some, you put your reps in. I know I love to say that thing. You put your reps in. You, uh, you've played those, that, the match so many times on that map. You just know how the game flows. Doesn't always flow that way, but you have that game sense to know that, okay, it's obvious they're going to try to push this area because they need to take this cap point. I mean, when you consider that an advantage, the fact that we have very few maps to have have to memorize. I remember back in the day in Destiny, God, we had a ton of maps, dude. In fact, Crucible Radio used to put those maps out. They diagram them and put them out on online where people could uh, know where the call out zones and stuff are. And I, I have to admit, I still am very weak in that area because I can't remember words very well. Call out areas I'm not very good at. So I have to tell people, cons I have to use flags. Like I play a lot of control, so I have right. to... Tell people what flag they're near. Anything right. to add there? Yeah, that's a, it's a wonderful couple of things that you brought up, actually. So just starting with the maps, there are third-party tools outside of the game that will help bolster your internal knowledge, such as map callouts. Now, you may have heard this wonderful bot that we have uh, access to us in our discords, which most folks out there may not be aware of, called Charlemagne. And Charlemagne has, on their website the various PvP maps that we have in the game. And we call these call-out maps. So that way, you can get to know the most common areas in a map, in a given map, just say simple two words, and your whole 
five man team that's with you will understand where to go and how to get there efficiently with as little communication as possible. So basically it's your, again, coming back to your ability to problem solve with minimal information, if not the same amount of information that the enemy team also has access to, by the way. So your ability to do this efficiently is going to speak to that. Let's, um, let's talk about that a little bit. If I'm yeah. playing a six, I know you don't play a lot of sixes, but when you play sixes, you really have to have a different mindset versus yeah. playing 3v3 comp or 3v3 I mean, whatever I game mean, type. Honestly, if you're playing, if you're not playing with friends, there's no established communication. They don't know if you're flanking. They don't know what you're going to be doing. Like, you should just be following them. You should just be following your team and you should pay attention to the scoreboard. And you should, whoever the best player is, oh, that guy got a really good, like, a lot of kills last round. Cool. I'm going to follow him this round. He did really bad this round, and the other guy did really good. Okay, it's 50 50. I'm going to follow both of them and try and stay alive. Like, put the odds in your favor. It's the best thing you can do. It literally just follow your teammates and don't be on their butt. But there's, there's only so many lanes, right? So, Pick cover from different angles, like try not to be on their heels, but follow with them, like watch them on radar, move as they're moving, mimic their their movement and stuff. And then that puts the odds in your favor when you get into a gunfight. Yeah, I remember uh, my there was two mottos when I played solo in sixes. One, adapt to your team, do what your team's doing. If they're a passive team, then you're going to be a passive player, because if you're the only fool running out there trying to flank in a passive game style... You're just not going to have a good time. Yep. So you have to adapt to your team. And the second thing I always tried to do, and I always wore this, just this one stat I always wore like a badge of pride, is be hard to kill. And not only be hard to kill, but your time between deaths, make that as long as possible. Those were two goals I had when I first started playing Crucible. Be hard to kill. Be a pain in the butt for the other team. Make the team send two to three people after you because they you've killed three of their guys. And they have no answer for you yet. And then secondly is, um, like I said, adapting to the team when you're playing in sixes. Now let's, let's, let's flip the tables here, Fluffy. You're playing in a, a team of three. Now, if you're playing with a team of three in the same situation where you're playing with random people and there's no communication, do you change your play style there or is it the same thing? I think I want to follow up on something you said. Do play it, your man. life. Please. I run a strand hunter. So I have a dodge that. Pings the radar, puts a red bo- a red my name out there, and does like a silhouette of me. Um, so I can spoof radar. I also have grapple, so I can move very, very quickly across the map. I have grapple, two jumps, and a shoulder charge. I can cover crazy distance very fast. If I'm with my team and they go down and the odds are against us, I am leaving a decoy and I am running to where they spawn. I don't care if the other team is half health. If there's multiple people and I can't just go in for an easy cleanup, like what good does it do for me to trade? I am much better to run away, regroup with my team and come back and like maybe slay them out, you know? So I I think that what you said has a lot of value to it. Like I, I very much find myself getting into a situation and then watching my team do something stupid and die every time. And it's like, and it's like, okay, there's no value of me running in or there's no value of me trying to one V three this team when I have a clear escape. And because of the speed of the strand hunter, they never, they can't catch me. Like it's amazing. It's just, it's not happening. So yeah, that's, I didn't play with that last season when I played Hunter, I should have, I should have played it more. I played more. Well, they, more the void route. They fixed it now because now you can do the shoulder charge thing really? automatically Ooh. when you grapple. So it's like a Titan shoulder charge at the end of a grapple. Okay. You have a Titan shoulder charge. You have a decoy you can leave out and you have a grapple where you can sling across the dude. That's just nasty. And ama- well, so the thing is because it's the wave frame grenade launcher build, um, I can do wave frame grenade launcher melee. And it's a ranged melee with tons of aim assist, so you don't even have to be pointed at them. And it's just wave frame, and you can literally do wave frame and hit the melee right as the grenade goes out. So the melee and the grenade actually hit at like the exact same time. Does that is that really hard to hard to time? Do you have to practice doing that, or is it pretty easy? Uh, it's just it's shoot one and immediately swap and shoot the other thing. Okay. Or 
melee. That's a good tip. Um, so so either way, a very strong kit. The super is very hard to get multiple kills with. Yeah, but but the uh, the rest of the kit doesn't is matter. The neutral amazing. game is too good. The neutral game is yep. awesome. Who yep. cares about the super? It's like it's like this the uh, void the void kit on a hunter is very good too. And but let's face it, uh, using your your bow to tie people up doesn't really do any good. It doesn't really help your team much. Other than if you're no, trying to capture a bunch of people on a point to get a multi kill, but other than that, it's not a burst super like you know, uh, like the arc version, the uh, yep. the storm. I can't remember what they call it. Good point on sixes. Now, how does your mindset change when you're playing in threes? I'll come over so, back to that question. Yeah, so threes, um, sixes, you can't control anything. Threes, you can control everything. So that's that's really the, the difference here. So it is a different mindset because you actually have full knowledge and control of what's going on. There's only three players. Your radar tells you when there's multiple players on near you, right? Right. You have a radar that tells you that. Mm-hmm. You have the knowledge of the kill feed and where your teammate is. And if you hear gunshots where they are, you know about what lanes they might be looking down. So you have all these bits of knowledge coming at you so you can get a pretty good understanding of where the other three players are on the map which tells you where is my cover where can i shoot from where can i escape to where would i expect them to walk out and really then it then that's really what it comes down to is i'm at this part of the map i see this person over there what am i expecting them to do i'm expecting them to walk out here And depending on the skill level, they might walk out right in the middle and not do take cover and not do anything smart. And if you're ready for them, then you have that the upper hand advantage. But they also have all the knowledge that you have. Mm -hmm. So so it's it's a mind game, you know. It's you're you're just sticking with your team and trying to keep the the numbers in your favor. Let me uh, let me ask you this: If I was a new player coming into Crucible, would you start in sixes or would you start in threes? I would think threes is a little more higher level as far as map knowledge and map and game awareness. But is that the place where you would learn or would you start in sixes? I I think you can learn in either. Um, So sixes is great for practice. It's great for just figuring out what might be fun and what what might not be fun. Right. Right. But you have no there's there's so much randomness Mm -hmm. in spawns. You can make really smart plays in sixes and just be burned because an enemy was just put in a bad place when they respawn, right? You're not lying there. So the thing is, while threes is intimidating and may have a little bit steeper learning curve, it is based on your skill. So if you get beat up a lot, you're eventually going to find people at your level, right? Right. That does not mean it's going to be easy. It means that they're going to be as good as you. So expect to win and lose 50% of the time. Right. Right. That's fine. Sometimes you're going to win. Sometimes you're going to lose. If you if you put the time in, you're going to win more. I don't think that people should be scared of threes because, well, yes, people who like Crucible more tend to go to threes. There's so much more in your favor for factors that you can control for things that you can learn from and for ways that you can get better playing. So I think you I think you would develop better habits and it. it it lends itself to learning the crucible better playing in threes just because there's just less, less randomness to it. You nailed it on the head. I mean, if you're, if you're trying to learn from a mistake you made, it's really hard to learn it in sixes because like the randomness you said, do you could make the right decision in the, in the, in the moment and be praising yourself, but then four people spawn behind you and you have no chance. So, yeah, I, I totally get that. I totally get what you're saying there. You mentioned earlier that you always go in with an improvement mindset. That's so, that was such a key term for me because that's the way I, and I'm a lot like you, sweaty spooks. I was a solo player. I, I've learned now that playing in teams is a lot, a lot more fun. But like you, there's times when I just want to chill out and shoot stuff and I really don't want to talk to anybody. I really just want to first just kind of relax. And then secondly, Maybe try to improve on one thing in the game. So right. my question is, what are those things you try to improve on in the game? I know there's a lot of them. And what I was thinking here, Sweaty, was we could just break it down a little bit 
and kind of oh, go sure. into I kind of go into fully stuff? intended on doing that okay. by starting by elaborating on what even you just said with the improvement focused. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the times, and I I think it's really really important for your listeners to understand this. Certainly, if you're not comfortable in the environment of PvP, but especially if you're a veteran, uh, say you came from an environment of Call of Duty, you come from an FPS experience. So you walk into this game with maybe a little bit of confidence. You think you know what you're doing and you know what to expect. But, you know, Gator, I think it's very important, uh, certainly in Destiny 2 Crucible, that you allow yourself the mental freedom to be a beginner and to allow yourself to make the mistakes and not hold yourself to such a degree that it becomes unfun because fun value is what's going to keep you coming back. And that is the most absolute number one important goal, no matter what. Everything else will follow. Because if you're not having fun, you're stressed out, you're not going to absorb that information. And it may be more difficult for you to learn how to counter that Titan's barricade. It may be more difficult for you to Maybe learn the lanes of which to peek, what not to peek. Perhaps there's a warlock in an empowering rift around the corner just waiting for that headshot. So first and foremost, Guardians, you want to have fun, you want to keep it stress-free, and you want to keep it constructive. So what are some of the basics that Crucible new players may not grasp right away? Well, it comes down to personal experience. Like I said, there may be the player who comes from a different FPS who has some of those basic skills. We're not going to just say crucible. We're going to say FPS in general. So things like cover, staying with your team, those things are not unique to Destiny. Those things are unique to FPS games in general. Now, if you don't have that experience, you've never played a first-person shooter before, you're not going to be aware of those things, and that is okay. That's why we're here. Because those of us who have spent that time recognize that there is a fundamental skill set that we become complacent with as a veteran that we don't think about. So when we're in that environment with the rookie or the amateur and they're saying, why are you moving from point A to point B in such a fashion? Well, it's because I understand there's a lane involved between two points of cover and I want to make sure that I'm using optimal movement movement, sorry, to uh, really minimize any damage that I could be taking and also to cover my team in relation to my current position. Now, that sounds like a lot to absorb. But again, it comes down to fundamental aspects um, of gameplay where, like I said, we just rudimentary, just we take it for granted almost, just in my personal opinion. So some of the basics as an example, movement is brought up a lot. Positioning is brought up a lot. But I'm also going to throw this in there. Radar reading and radar manipulation. If your enemy can't tell how close or how far you are from them, as an example, let's see, if I main a hunter in the game, and if I was playing Void, I have access to a tool called a smoke bomb. And in the point where you and I are aware of each other's position, if I can throw that smoke bomb close to you and throw off your perception of where I'm going to be presenting myself then you're going to have to spend some time to correct to my actual position where I'm aware as to your location and able to use that against you. But this is a more of an advanced method that is built upon the fundamentals that we kind of take for granted. Like I said, things like positioning. Do you have a teammate? Are you going in there solo? Are you staying one degree off of your team? Meaning if your team is at point uh, domination A point, you go no further than domination point B. And the reason for this guardian is if you go all the way to domination point C or Charlie by yourself and your entire team is on the other side of the map, you're leaving them open because they're outnumbered for a strategy of the enemy team to capitalize on. We call these mistakes. Now, say as an example, not even as an example, let's just say in a best case scenario that your team did manage to beat the odds. They still have to spend all that time traveling to go get you. And is that going to be enough time before the enemy team spawns back and has to put them into another disadvantaged situation to pick up your res? Never play too far from your team. One degree is what this means. Another thing uh, uh, that I would add is if you're taking the self-responsibility, you've made the conscious decision as an individual, I am going to flank. It is very important that you understand your role where your team is not responsible to cover you as a flanker. It is actually your responsibility as the flanker to cover your team, which is also 
additionally why it's important that you only play one degree off of your team. So, you know, it, radar manipulation, where you're moving, your your movement, your positioning um, in relation to your team in conjunction with what the current goal is, is all going to come together to snowball effect uh, and how that match turns out. Now, that's not to say that you should always be worried about the overall outcome and match score. Say as an example, your team lost, but you felt that You know, that match, I did really well at uh, staying close to cover, staying with my team. You know, there is something to be said to that experience and taking those lessons and moving forward with them. Don't allow a loss defeat you. That is very huge. Do not allow a loss to become a defeat. And that, again, comes back to the fun value where you're you're just having fun. Because as soon as you're not having fun, you've been defeated. Yeah, Um, good point. And that's... That's the point where, you know, you have taken a true loss. Are you going to come back or are you taking a break for a while? You know, there is a big fundamental difference here. So just a little food for thought. I know you're uh, I know you have some other points you want to make, but I want to I want to break in here because we both play as solo players. And I'll tell you what, that was a great benefit to me because what I learned to do, Sweaty, is realize what my team was doing. What they, what their plan was, even if they were a bunch of solo players, I kind of watched their tendencies. I watched and saw what type of players they were. Were they all going to rush and be aggressive or they were sitting back? Or do we have a couple flankers and maybe a few, few stay back? The one thing I learned to do is two things. I made myself very hard to kill because that doesn't help my team to die. And the second thing I made my sure, sure that I did is adapt to the team I'm playing with. Yeah. And being as we're both solo players, I think we both, and what's great about that is we kind of learn quickly by playing a lot of solo matches that now that we play with teams, we're, we have the communication added to that. I feel like we have a little bit of an advantage sometimes. Well, even perhaps as a solo player, when you're playing in those matches, you don't have communication. So maybe you don't always need that communication when you're finally in that team environment. You just know where the team is moving. You can hear their comms, so you're able to just react. Because it, 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 what you're training yourself to do is not learn the 20 principles of Crucible, but the, th- or sorry, not the 20 steps of Crucible, but the three principles that are going to allow you to respond to an ever-changing flow of circumstances. Things like map knowledge and map awareness, things like your weapons awareness, all of this comes together uh, into really just your game sense and um, how you play with that team. It, it really kind of all, like I said, just kind of snowballs. It's not one thing or another. It's rather, it's not the sum of its parts, but the whole, if that makes sense. Very true. Very true. Let you, I mean, you nailed it earlier too. When you play with a team and maybe they didn't do to, so hot and we end up losing the game. And you felt like you really contributed. You cannot tell yourself that you are a bad player. You have to f- accentuate the positives that you did for your team. And you you gave your best effort to make sure your team had a shot at winning the game. And sometimes the team's just better. The other mm-hmm. team you're playing is just better. And man, does that happen a lot in Crucible? You'll have teams that just outclass your team. You'll, you'll yep. count on, uh, people to hold the, the, uh, the flankers off and they don't. The flankers blow through and blow up our team. That happens all the time as well. So, God, play Iron Banner, man. You'll learn that really quick. When they blow through your team and your ranks and your files, and all of a sudden you're the only one left in their spawn, you learn real quick. You better get moving. And uh, the second thing I wanted to mention here, and you mentioned it earlier, is positioning. Now, mm-hmm. positioning can be a couple things, right? It can be positioning on the map as a whole or positioning when you're going 1v1 or 1v2 against people, right? Yep. Um, can you explain that a little bit more? Absolutely. So game sense is a very interesting thing because game sense is not just one thing, but as an example, knowing the sounds of guns from around a corner, you can hear that fusion charging. So you know not to push because that burst is going to pop. As soon as you see those bolts fly past the wall, then you know to push because they're going to have to reload things like this. This all comes in time, but I can give you a specific example from today where I took home a W in a comp match. It was neck and neck the whole way, two and two, and then it came down to the final round where it was very similar to a trials round. You only get the one life and the only way you come back is if your team revives you. Now, we were at a disadvantage. We had used up and burned all of our supers, and we were going up against a bubble titan on an objective point that I knew, okay, 
I'm be I'm a strand hunter. I know that he's going to pop his bubble on the OBJ, aka the objective. So I'm just going to sit back and let him pop his bubble on the objective. And when that happens, I'm going to pop my super from around a corner, and then I'm going to grapple over to the bubble and then drop down to suspend the entire team. And as soon as they're all suspended and they can't do anything, I'm just going to beat the crap out of them with my super and take home the W. Well. One got away, and that was okay. I took out two of the three, I popped the bubble, and suddenly we're in a 3v1 situation that favors us. Now, all we had to do was sit on the OBJ. We took care of the threat, and that person had to make a choice. Do I try and push these guys, or do I try and bait some of them off of the objective, beat them in a 1v1v1 situation, But of course, we knew better, so we stayed on the objective, and he had no choice. He had to try and push us, and we took home the W in a situation that was against us. So this comes from experience, first and foremost. And secondly, I only learned that set that how to do that because when I wasn't sure how to defeat it, I played it for a while and made mental note of what killed me while I was playing that class in that situation. Uh, And I was able to apply that to my main character in my main gameplay in a situation that really mattered. And this is a testament to personal improvement, to taking those losses, but learning and being willing to take another loss for the sake of learning and to better yourself and your teammates. And that's really all it came down to. And you know what? I was very proud of myself that we did it clean. We knew what to expect and we, we cleared the objective and we succeeded in doing that. Uh, I'm not quite sure with, if that answered the question, but no, playing, with, playing intention. with intention, brother, that is mm-hmm. exactly what we're talking about here. You probably went into several games solo and said, I'm, you know what? I'm sticking with this strand subclass. I want to see what it's going to take to do this. I want to see what, what kills that bubble Titan. Boy, I learned the hard way, by the way, I played iron banner this last weekend. Bubble ain't what it used to be. That's true. Boy, I sat in that sucker, man, and everyone was chomped. That was, they were licking their chops. They couldn't wait to get in there and kill me. And it was record time. But that's another thing too is the sandbox is always a liquid changing living thing. What may work two seasons ago, like I mentioned the bubble there, may not work as good this time. So it's always good to keep, you know, abreast of the changes in the game. And that's from the, you know, that's the only way we know about that is from either YouTube folks telling us about it that play Crucible and also the, uh, this week in Destiny. They mentioned the right. sandbox changes every, and it usually happens every season. They do like a little tweak kind of mid season just to tune things up a bit. But I don't know about you, but the sandbox has been pretty balanced. I right. mean, it's been yeah. pretty, it's probably been the best I can remember because there was always an outlier of guns that just, God, the hand cannon age in Crucible was brutal. Gosh. And now we're at a point where if you continued with that that choice of gameplay, Mm -hmm. now it's very rewarding. Yes. That's a good way to put it. Trying one thing and and jumping into a game solo where you really don't care. You're just experimenting and trying new things. And like you said, the new build. I went into Iron Banner last night. First Iron Banner. I'll, I'll be honest. I haven't played any Crucible other than Iron Banners. That's how infrequently I've been playing Crucible. And I'm telling you what, Crucible is the one thing that if you don't continue to play it, it's like a muscle. You kind of lose a little bit of your strength. And I found that out last, uh, last night we played scrims, uh, with, uh, some of the guys. And, um, man, I was just getting, just getting owned. So it, it's a, it's a kind of thing where I was, I was uh, playing, I'm playing a Titan. I lost a bet. So I had to play Titan this season. And, uh, I looked online and there was this build that this one guy was using on YouTube and it was a very aggressive build, which if you know me is very much against my play style. And, uh, I tried it. I tried it, uh, playing iron banner. And I tell you what, other than one lucky play where I used Antaeus Ward, someone, I killed one, someone and then punched his buddy next to him. That was the highlight of the night. 
I within three games put that put that build away and it came out with a more conservative uh, void build with the bubble and uh, and more more of a passive more sl- slowing down my play, which is which fits my play style and that's that. Well, go ahead. But you're being aggressive in sixes, yeah. and that's is that's hard to pull off yeah. because you. It's very common for you to get into a situation where it's a 1v4, 1v3. All night long. And you're in like the chances of you winning that are not high. So like being a, I, I know what, I know what you're saying because I, I have also played Iron Banner recently and that's the only sixes I play. So while I might be playing Crucible all the time, I prefer threes. Um, I really, really don't like sixes. Um, especially with all the matchmaking stuff they have in, in there. If it was all connection based and it was a roulette wheel of who I might get and what skill level, that'd be great. But it's not. It's um, it's sweaty. So if I'm going to play something sweaty, I want less people on the field. I want more knowledge and control of what's going on on the map. If you play aggressive in Iron Banner, which I <laughs> so made this mistake, um, then all of a sudden you're in a one v four situation, you know, and and even worse if. If you can be in a situation where they spawn people in between you and the enemy. So all of a sudden you have enemies spawning behind you as you're pushing forward into enemies and now you're sandwiched. What are you going to do? You're going to trade, maybe get two kills. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just, it's not the right play. You, just... you almost have to be with your team yeah. and then you can only be aggressive when your team is aggressive, Right. You described my that what you just said described my whole night because one thing I kept saying and I'm no tired people were tired of me saying it because I was getting really salty and I don't get salty I've been really good about not being salty and not taking myself too seriously playing the game tilt is real man and nobody in your group is having fun when you're salty and you're no. complaining about stuff that no one cares about no one cares about and the one thing that I that I kept saying was every time I get into a gunfight. I just wish I could get a 1v1 because I think I would have a good shot. But every time I got into a gunfight, it was 2v1 or a 3v1 yep. against me. And you nailed yep. it. Now, if I would have waited for my team to come around and be aggressive like Briggs, as he's a real aggressive player, if I was behind Briggs and we were two man in it, then I would have had a lot better success using that aggressive build. There's so much in this game, dude. There's so much in this game you can talk about. And I don't want to get too deep in the woods here because we're talking to new players here that are just wanting to get into it and, and sure. try to figure out how to improve in the game. And me and you have been playing this game since the beginning. So we've got a lot of time under our belt, to a lot of trial and error. But, um, but I, there's a good lesson in that, though, right? Like yeah. the lesson is stick with your team. Yep. When like, it, if yeah. you're playing sixes or playing threes, like, yep. you want the best odds for winning the next gunfight, right? Your team might not be playing with you, but that doesn't stop you from playing with them. What would you say, if you're playing a good team, what are the f- things that stick out to you right away where you know, whoa, we're playing some good players here? Just so they, the new player knows what they're <laughs> seeing when, they, when they're in game. They don't miss their shots. Well, good. <laughs> they, they, aside, punish, aside, they punish every mistake yes, you make. <laughs> aside from their fantastic uh, gunplay, what what is what are the things you see them doing in the game? We are like, oh, this guy's going to be tough to kill. Well, so they're so good players play into the strengths of their build, right? So, so good players going to look different based on what build they're using. Some good players use. Uh, striker and Teus were, were Titan, and you'll know because they'll come sliding at you over and over again, and you won't be able to kill them. Um, some good players are great at sniping, and they'll chill and wait for you to push into the regular 50 50, knowing that you're going to walk right there and not slide it or jump it or do anything, and they'll pop you the second you take the step around the corner. And so I think it, with any game, adapt. Don't be psyched out by the fact that they're a good player. I have beat players that I should have never beat before with teammates that were at my skill level. So we had no business beating them, but we just something happened and their game fell apart and they did not play at the level that they're known for on that session. So like until the game is over, don't give up playing someone good or knowing that someone is good gives you time to try and adapt. And you might not, they might five Oh you faster than, than, you know, or 3-0, depending on what game mode you're playing. But at least try. And, and 
you know, if they do something like they pop you because you walked into a doorway, like don't walk into that doorway next time. If it's a main doorway, like, can you put a shield down and peek the corner without being shot? Can you put your rift down up against the wall and quick third person rotate your camera so you can see if they're looking? Uh, can you do a hunter dodge and rotate your camera to see if they're looking? Um, I do that a lot if I know it's a really good sniper. Like, I use my ability to, to peek around the corner. You just have to um, just try and adapt, and you'll make a lot of mistakes, but eventually, like you'll come up against enough snipers or enough Antaeus shotgun guys that you'll just know like how, how to counter it or how to at least make it hard for them. You know, if they're a shotgunner, give them space, you know, use that as a, as a Senate nomad told me, uh, use those little joysticks and go backwards when yeah. they run at you. It's like, what do you do when they run at you with a shotgun? What do you do? He goes, well, they have these things called joysticks. I play on a controller. Obviously, you play on mouse and keyboard. You use them and you back up. You give them space. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. I mean, I dodge. My specter goes in the way it messes up their aim. It blows up when they get next to it. It sends little things at them, and I'm jumping backwards, popping them with a hand cannon as they're coming at me. Yeah. You know? Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Sometimes they get me. Sometimes they don't. Typically, when I'm playing a good team and I start, uh, the one thing, the very first thing I can tell when I know I'm playing a good player is when the player takes so much damage and then does give up on it. They, they don't get greedy. They back up into cover and wait for their, their shields to recharge. It's like those damn captains in PVE. You shoot them, you shoot them down to their, like a, just a, just a, just a freckle from death. And then they go and zip and vanish behind cover only to be full strength again. And that's the one thing I always notice when I play good players. They'll take two or three shots and then they're out, then they're, they're regrouping. They're reevaluating and they're trying to figure out how to get to you or how to shoot you better. It's really fun. The cat and dog fights are really, really fun. But uh, that's the thing that came to mind for me. Okay, we're about to wrap up this episode. But before we go, I wanted to share just a few more quick clips that I thought we just really couldn't leave out. There's six very special words that are very special to me that directly contributed to my personal growth within the game. Now, of course, that's going to look different for everybody because we all have different experiences in life. But those six words for me, Gator, is what could I have done differently? This comes down to self-accountability. Sometimes we find it difficult to answer that question for ourselves. So... If you're having difficulty answering those questions for yourselves, what I've done th to help myself, not everybody has access to this, but I have re started recording some of my gameplay so I could watch it back. Now, not everybody has that capability and I'm able to recognize that, but maybe you have a friend that can watch you play. And rather than interrupting in the middle of your match, wait until the end and just talk about the match. Or if that really isn't something that you have access to, private matches. Because if you're... 1v1-ing with someone you trust, then A, it's not going to hurt so much when you take an L, but B, they're able to honestly reaffirm back to you some feedback that you may be able to digest and chew on that would really be constructive criticism. So what you're really hearing here, Gator, is a lot of difficult things, self-accountability, self-awareness, self-honesty, and being able to take constructive criticism. These are not easy things for people to digest in an every day-to-day -day basis life. But the more that you're able to sharpen that sword, the easier it will be for you to cut through the competition. But let's simplify it, okay? I'm a new Crucible player, Fluffy. Uh, this Crucible looks fun. I've seen people play it. What's the first thing you tell me just to do? Have yeah. fun. And then, and then just, it just be real, man. Just be honest. Like yeah. you're going to make mistakes. You're going to be bad. You're going to die. Like you just start at the bottom and work your way up. And maybe not. Maybe you're one of those people that doesn't play a lot of PVP, but it's just as good. I mean, they exist. They're, they're in both of our communities. Mm -hmm. uh, some people are just naturally better than others, yeah. but they call it average for a reason. It's because most people fall in that category. So you're probably going to be average or below. Yep. Just embrace it, have fun and start learning. And then when you do figure out something that you like, it will draw you back. You know, that's, I mean, that, that's really where it is, is at. I was hoping my, um, emblem was going to show 
the counter on it in dim, but it does not. So I have killed well over a hundred thousand guardians in the crucible. That's a lot. Like I've I've logged I've logged my time and if you find something fun, Crucible can be fun. I found a new build at the beginning of the season, and I was thinking about it like a crack addict. Like, I was doing other shit and, like, being like, man, I can't wait to get back and try this. Not because I was good at it, but because it was hard to master. But the few times that I did hit those shots, people died so fast. And it was like, oh, man, this is going to be oppressive. You know, it's like it's like learning how to snipe and missing 30 shots, but hitting one. Oh. And when you hit that one headshot, yeah, it just feels, it just feels great. Such yeah. So so again, like have fun, play around like there's a lot of things that work really well in the crucible right now. So um, okay. pick some up and give it 10 games and try it out. And if it doesn't feel good in 10 games and try something else. I know a lot of people who've uh, joined our scrims. It's our, our GDC community scrims, which is from all the discords coming in play, including some from your community too, uh, Fluffy. Yep. And I have people that were totally green when I first played them just a year and a half or so ago. And just yesterday kicked my butt. <laughs> I was amazed how far this person had come. And uh, they they were not green anymore. And that's just from playing with our community and what's great about the scrims is we actually join our groups together. We have separate groups when we're playing, but then we join up into a main group and we discuss uh, if new players, in fact, can say, listen, uh, I got my butt kicked that game. What could I have done differently? And some of the more established players can speak up and say, well, I noticed you did this and then I noticed you kept doing this. And so I just capitalized on that. And you can learn so much so quickly just from that. And you don't, this is hard to get out through Twitch. You know, you can't, you can't do this with a streamer. They've got hundreds of people they're talking to at one time. You just don't get that personal attention like you would. And, and I'm not trying to promote just our scrims, but you guys do it in your community too, right? You guys have, uh, scrims or uh, practice sessions? I mean, we, we have had scrims and leagues and private matches. Right. Um, it's been it's been a season or a season and a half since we've done it, but yeah. um, you know, the thing is, like between you guys and Blueberry Lounge, there's always scrims yeah. going on. Yep, that's right. So, the one thing that I did to get better, and it was almost like a hack. I would consider it a hack because it increased my learning curve so much faster than say if I was just to just put my head down and play play Crucible, right? is I watched streamers that were much better than me. And I learned one, how did they act when they died? I know cool guy. He'll say, okay, what did I do wrong there? And if you watch him stream, you'll actually hear him say to himself, yeah, I shouldn't have done that because that's, that's the reason this happens. Cause if I didn't do this, if I would have done this instead, and that's his mindset, he's like, what did I do wrong? Let's not make that mistake again. And he's very quick at it. I love Mm -hmm. that guy for that. Uh, I just don't like his taste in, pro football teams, but that's okay. And I'll watch someone like true Vanguard. And I know everyone thinks I have a crush on true Vanguard. It's not that I have a crush on the guy is my play style is a lot like his. He's a much more conservative player. I mean, he can turn it on when he needs to, but the one thing I learned about him is he never let the game go to his head. He always kept a level head and no matter if people were teabagging him because he's a streamer and all the abuse he got from the community, Another thing I learned from true Vanguard is his map awareness. And he would always, he was always in the right spot. Like you mentioned, he made, he always was in the spot that benefited him and not the other player. Very cerebral player. Very, very smart. He saw the overall picture of the game. And then lastly, uh, the thing I learned was when they died in a game, they didn't just sit there and be quiet. They were that third eye for their team. Because they're mm-hmm. in a third person perspective now. When you're dead, all you can see is your ghost, but you can have a wide angle lens on what's going on around you. And more importantly, you can scroll to the players that are alive still and you can see that you have that out, that, that fisheye view or that uh, third person view or over the shoulder view of your players that are still playing. And what's great is you can actually help them on their perimeters that they may not see stuff. You can see stuff forming ahead of time and, uh, 
uh, that's the one thing that I always learned is when you die, speak up. You mm-hmm. need to become the radar for that person and enhance the radar. Do you kind of see it that way? 100%. If I were to take a step back and take a bigger look at the picture of what you just painted for me, I would say that the reason that you like True Vanguard is your approach to an individual ability to problem solve and the style in which you decide to approach that problem solving. You really want to find folks that you know, I'm not going to say have the same way of thinking, but perhaps open new doors to things that you hadn't considered before, which is just going to arm you in terms of arsenal and give you more tools in your kit and your toolbox in order to solve new problems moving forward. So really what this is at the end of the day is your ability to problem solve. Now, you just hit something that I think is really important. And we did kind of lightly touch on this, but I'd like to speak to it a little bit more. Absolutely. uh, Because this does come from the team-based player experience. Now, me and Todd the Gator here, we have a very, very beloved friend that we uh, refer to as Mr. Fluffy Fingers MD. Oh, yeah. And one thing that gentleman very much, very, very much appreciates is when his teammates bring uh, an environment or an aura, a positivity, and aren't clogging up the comms or communication channels with negativity. Because by clogging up the communication channels with negativity, you're actually going to add stress to your teammates, which is going to take away or subtract their ability to problem solve with uh, that constant flow of interchanging variables. Whereas if you bring that positivity, you keep a good positive tone with your teammates. It's a lot easier for your friends to have that mental freedom in order to respond. Maybe they're responsible for getting your res point. I mean, you know, we talked about that earlier where you're still giving communications of positioning on the enemy in relation to what they're doing, uh, or your, meaning your teammates and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's just one example where having a positive mindset, keeping the toxicity away is really going to just benefit and bolster your team at the end of the day. Oh, I mean, I would bring down teams. I was so toxic back in my early plays. I was, and we're so, all responsible. We absolutely, all do it. absolutely, and we're so hard on ourselves that we say it verbally out loud. The, the rest of the team doesn't want to hear it. They don't care. Mm-hmm. It's not helping. I mean, what am I? I mean, if I'm getting pissed because I missed a shot or someone killed me too fast or it was suspect or whatever, has nothing to do with helping your team, right? And to this and, day, I still fight with that. It's a bad habit I had from Call of Duty because Call of Duty, was, let's face it, Call of Duty was toxic. Probably still is. I don't. I haven't played it in a while, but it, it, I came from that environment where it was okay to bitch and moan and complain that someone killed you too quickly or outsmarted you or were cheating or ha- what was the word lag switching. That was a common. <laughs> that was a common thing I always heard. Oh, that's a lag switch. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, I equate that to being mostly we're just. We love this game. We're very passionate about this game. And I think that we all perhaps feel a little self-responsible that we let the team down. And I'm very guilty of that. You know, I that's part of the reason why I shy away from some of the PvE content is because I feel like I've let the team down. I wasn't that that team player that, you know, had the hero moment and really made sure everybody pulled clutch and, oh, we saved the day. We managed to complete it. Sometimes, you know what? That's okay. Why? Because we still need to understand that we're not going to be strong in all aspects of the game. And it's important on an individual basis, coming back full circle, that you allow yourself the mental freedom to be a beginner. The one thing that I always encourage people, and this has been in my YouTube videos, anytime I talk about Crucible, is record your gameplay and watch it back. Do you do that? I used to do that. um, And I think it's super helpful. I actually upgraded my PC and um, the HDR settings have made my recording of gameplay not Excellent. possible. Um, so I'm troubleshooting that. But yep. um, no, um, back in D1, that was a huge thing. Uh, Crucible Radio said it a lot. TV said it a lot. Mm-hmm. Cami, all those guys. So yeah, I used to stream. I got into streaming um, because I wanted to record my gameplay. And so I would stream gameplay and then I would go back and watch it while I was at work. And I was watching a lot of YouTube videos back then. So I would watch a YouTube video and then get an idea of what I want to do. And then I would go in and I would record my gameplay. And then I would go back and watch my gameplay and try and try and critique what I was doing. And not like, uh, oh, I was just stupid. But like, what was the mistake there? 
what is the common mistake I keep seeing myself doing? Like, you know, pushing out into the middle of a lane, like not using cover. I died there because it was two, it was a two V one. Like I flanked by myself and I am not the strongest player on the team. So I died, you know? And so like, yeah, I think, I think watching the gameplay goes hand in hand with, again, research, watching good players and, and are you emulating what you saw? When I first was learning to play Crucible and get better at Crucible, I took this to heart. This was the one thing I did a lot of. And it's, it's, it's a lot harder to say it than do it because it's yeah. hard for someone to, to not just jump in and play Crucible, but actually watch a game they already played. And it's, it's really tough for people to have the patience to watch through a game they already played. But the one thing I realized when I watch some of my gameplay back, Fluffy, is I keep doing the same stupid mistakes yeah. all game 100%. long. And oh, yeah. if, once you find yeah. that pattern and you realize how many people were cashing in on that mistake, then what you do is you have a little nugget now that you can go in and what? Practice. You can yeah. go in the next, go into a 6v6, practice, and this time, I'm not going to do that thing, same thing on this map that I did last time. And let's see how, let's see what happens. Well, and a lot of times uh, when I die now in game, it's like I'm watching my recorded gameplay because I um, ask myself a lot, especially if I'm playing solo. Why did I die? Which is what I would ask myself when I was watching my gameplay. Why did I die there? And so the question was, why did I die? Oh, I used grapple right off a of spawn and swung into the enemy team. <laughs> like, like I use my speed to get somewhere really fast and set up. But you know what? My teammates went a different way. And all of a sudden, the plan that was in my head was not how things actually unfolded. And now I'm just in a bad spot. Right. You know, it's 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 um, I think watching your gameplay can help lead to better critical thinking in practice time. Yeah. And I know on PC, it's a little harder. You have to have hardware. But there's actually I have a uh, software that I actually got on a trial basis that was free and in lifetime uh I still use it today to capture some B-roll and it records up to 2k it up, covers up to f uh 8k video dude it's crazy and I paid $30 for a lifetime license on it that's it well so, you can get OBS OBS is free absolutely yeah I didn't yeah. even think of that it does record MP4 but usually it's stuck to 1080 which is fine it's all you need I mean what do you need you need 4k to watch your play no uh but the um the, all the consoles have, you know, instant record last game. PlayStation, to me, is the best at it. I don't know what Xbox has done lately, but I remember they used to have fixed amounts. They were very limited on what you could go back and record, but uh, I'm sure it's better now. But I can go back and record up to an hour of gameplay on PS5. Um, it's it's pretty nice. It does go to your hard drive, I mean, to your to your SSD, so you have to make sure you offload it somewhere on a zip drive and put it somewhere you can watch it. Wow, I've lost count on how many PvP tips we've talked about today, but just know you can come back and review anything we've said here, and I wanted to thank my two very good friends who took the time to talk with me about all things PvP in the Crucible. Gentlemen, that was a lot of fun. You can probably pick up that we are all pretty passionate about the topic. You can hear Sweaty Spooks on his podcast, The Blueberry Lounge, and you can hear more from Fluffy Fingers MD from his show, The Potato Thumbs Podcast. I'll post their show links in the description below. Remember, if you have any questions for me, just visit destinyhelpdeskpodcast.com to get all of my contact information or just look below in our show description. If you like what you heard today, spend a second and rate and review the show. It'll help us reach more Guardians in the Destinyverse. Take care and later, Guardian. part of this game that people just have not they just have not gotten out of that shell to jump into and start you yeah. know and that is a skill in itself so listener out there don't be discouraged uh, it's going to happen you're going to have those match even I myself sweaty spooks get frustrated from time to time certainly when I have seven matches in a row of 
you know, just rudimentary BS, if you will. You know, everybody faces a cheater every once in a while. This is an online video game. And uh, those people exist out in the world, even in the real world today. Whenever you're walking down the street, you'll meet them in the real world as well. So it's no different online. So happen. be realistic with yourself. If you need to take a break, take a break. Because again, at the end of the day, the most absolute important value above anything that could be gun skill, mechanical skill, or awareness is the fun value. And I cannot stress that enough. If you're not having fun, you're not having fun and you're not absorbing anything new. Well, I think that's a great way to end it right there. Thank you, sir. Anytime, Appreciate my time, friend. Man. Hey, Appreciate you. Have a good night, brother. Good to see you, man. Thanks for <laughs> Thank uh, thanks for coming on the show. Absolutely. Cheers. Deuces. Deuces.